From Move Media Productions, I'm Kelly Schnur with a Stoke podcast. Stoke Muskoka is an arts and cultural zine out of Muskoka, highlighting unique and locally focused stories of sustainable and inclusive communities. Today, I'm talking with Taylor and Emily from Moonwing Meadows. They are our feature story in our first issue of Stoke Zine, coming out May 2021. Moonwing Meadows is a little slice of Muskoka paradise. It's a place to reconnect to your wild spirit. It's a place offering nature-based wellness, retreats, and workshops. Emily and Taylor are stewards on this land. They are creating a unique utopia in the woods east of Eleven and south as the crow flies from Huntsville. This utopia is Moonwing Meadows. It is a place where bees buzz, roosters crow, and the moonlight dances on fields of flowers. Sun, salutations, and feeding chickens are a normal morning routine. They grow vegetables, flowers, and of course, pollinators. They are consciously building a self-sustainable ecosystem. It's a place they call home. Let's chat with them now. Beautiful. You guys are both there. Emily, Taylor, lovely to meet you. Yes. Yes. (laughs) You too. Cool. I'm super excited to uh, to do this with you both, and I want to thank you for joining me um, and agreeing to speak with me um, about Moonwing Meadows. Um, I am really just so excited to learn more about what you're both doing. I really applaud you both for doing this, um, and by this I mean creating a lifestyle around philosophies that you so strongly believe in um, and just fiercely following your dreams. I think it's really incredible. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really awesome. Is why the name Moon Wing Meadows? Yeah, so maybe I'll answer that. Yeah, that was Taylor's brainchild. Mm-hmm. Nice. So I wanted, I don't know, I mean, and Emily is one of these as well. We're just people that do many things. We wear many hats. And it was really kind of trying to find that focus and how can we create this kind of umbrella where we can express ourselves in all the ways that we love to do so. And it kind of started the whole permaculture and sustainability puzzle piece came in with the beekeep, my beekeeping program that I did. And also as well, us being two women who are very connected to the moon cycles. Um, that was a huge part of it. I was driving a little further up north visiting a friend at her cottage and there was a road and it said Moonwing. And I was like, whoa, what? <laughs> this, and it was kind of in my brain, like, what do I want my business to be called? You know, that I can do my beekeeping, I can do everything else under. And yeah, Moonwing just spoke to me. And then I was vibing with another friend who's um, kind of my co-beekeeper. And and we're like Moonwing Farms, Moonwing. We're like, ah, oh, she's like Moonwing Meadows, and I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> like, how did we, the royal we as a society, move so far away from our connection to nature? So what you're creating is bringing us back. How did we get so far away from it? What's your thought on that? Mm, yeah, um, it's such a. I'm like such in the thick of this right now. It's like studying in, in the courses I'm doing in university right now. I'm like yeah. finishing this. Um, and all about like environmental ethics and forestry and um, like indigenous studies and all those things. And it's like this, I think, I mean, initially started with the way our culture and our society um, progressed from Mm. um materialism and the industrial industrial revolution revolution. yeah yeah exactly and cultural revolution yeah and just this concept of like infinite growth right that more is better and we always need to be expanding and improving you know bunny ears around that whatever that means and and there was a point in time when population didn't play into it and in resources seemed like these infinite things and we very quickly realized that they are not you know and there's people that are still trying to fight people on that (laughs) you know that like we're still treating the earth like it is it is infinite that like it's just here for us to take take care 
mm-hmm. that it will completely rejuvenate and heal itself and continue to give no matter how we treat it, right? Exactly. Yeah, and a lot of that, um, like, colonial settler uh, mindset of, like, owning the land and yeah. humans being um, master of their mm-hmm. domain and of the land rather than more of, like, the indigenous yeah. mindset of, like, it being, you being a part of this like world of creation and mm-hmm. you know. we are we are literally the earth like the way we treat our bodies the way we treat ourselves is the way we treat the mother is the way we treat earth mm-hmm. and yeah. it shows it's showing in our mental health it's showing in the state of the earth mm-hmm. you know yeah. and our body the states of our body mm-hmm. yeah it is for sure <laughs> just to return to nature why is it so important? I'll keep it simple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the return to nature is the return to ourselves. Like, if I can put it as simply as that. Yeah. Like, we are nature, and I think we've created this this divide within, you know, that nature and wild is other mm-hmm. than us. We've separated we've ourselves separated. With, yeah. from it. Interesting. And, yeah. And it's recognizing and rediscovering that interconnectedness and how we rely on it. It relies on us. It's this mutual relationship. How are you rediscovering that interconnectedness? How are you two personally doing that? Yeah. So for me, Taylor, I like for me, one of my personal practices is going out into the woods every day without a purpose. Mm. So being in, so I'm kind of going back to that other thing about, you know, when did we lose that connection to nature along the way? You know, when you start talking about masculine and feminine energies, and I'm not in any way saying male, female, it's the energies. Um, And I think that the world's view for a long time has been in that very masculine energetic space, you know, and we're seeing this this shift in a lot of ways, culturally, energetically, that we need to come back to this, you know, we need to come back to balance Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. or things are, you know, things are starting to be very disrupted. So I'd say going into the forest for me is that without purpose is that practice of being in my feminine with the mother and just kind of, you know, experiencing and like reading, learning to read all the signs that she's giving to me. Beautiful. Taylor, and what, can you kind of give me a cold note of, and and trust me, I will take the time at some point in the future to hear the full story, but Mm -hmm. can you give me the cold notes on one of the most um, powerful moments that you've had doing this? What did that moment look like? Mm -hmm. Ooh. um, Oh my gosh. I feel like every moment for me in the woods. (laughs) Awesome. It's the beauty of it. It's like every time it shows something new, you go, it just allows you, like nature has this way of holding us. And I think my most memorable or like the most, you know, yeah, the biggest experiences are the ones where I am feeling not at home in myself. I'm not feeling at home in my human. I'm not, I'm not grounded. And when I go into the forest, there's this amazing way that nature holds you and takes, doesn't judge you, never judges you for, you know, the emotions, for the, your state, you know, any sort of yeah. state that you're in. She holds you in, mm-hmm. in all of your everything. <laughs> and I think that's the most, that's the most powerful thing for me. And, you know, just when the wind kind of hits you the right way and you're just like, Yes, like that was for me. That was like a whisper and the leaves shimmer and like move together. And it's like, they're like cheering for you. Yeah. (laughs) You're you're totally speaking my language. And um, Emily, I don't know. Taylor and I chatted real quick before this call um, a week ago or so. And um, I I was telling her that my wife and I moved up here end of August. So we are just embracing nature. We are just getting mm. into the woods for the first time we're mm. loving this winter mm. and um but everything you're saying the the trails the forest bathing that we've been doing the um you know the wind that we've been capturing on our walks has just 
Really, I'm just, I, yeah, I hear you, girl. I hear you. <laughs> um, Emily, what about you? Tell me about yeah. how you reconnect. Um, so we, Taylor and I kind of joke a little bit. We're, we have a very much a yin yang and a balancing of our energies and the way that we go about doing things. And Taylor is like, yeah, Taylor is a little more like air, a little more water, and I'm a little more like earth. And okay. so the way I connect is true the doing is true like getting my hands dirty um and 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 the learning and um so I've you know it was such a gift the silver lining of COVID for me really to be able to come back here mm. um and you know and this is the land that I actually like grew up on and was born yeah. and raised um so you know yeah mm-hmm. so being able to rediscover the forest true like eyes that you know really appreciate what it is that I have because as a kid you know I totally took that for granted and didn't realize how fortunate I was um and then you know just getting excited about Moon Moon Meadows and the ideas that it's bringing forth so getting out there and you know um planting the gardens you know getting your hands in the earth and you know creating um an orchard so you know clearing space and finding out ways that you know what what is best to clear so that something else can grow and that like interconnectedness of of the plants and and everything and just really getting to know it again like as a friend and and not even Mm. just being like walking through it but understanding the different plants and trees and what it is that they offer and how they provide to the ecosystem. We both took a wild medicine course last year with Laura from Wild Muskoka. And that was a moment for me where it's like, I always felt connected to nature. I always felt like I had this beautiful, you know, way of being in nature, but it was that taking that and realizing like seeing each plant as an individual mm-hmm. rather than like an entire landscape yeah. rather oh. rather than just being like this is the forest I'm in the forest it's mm-hmm. like you go in the forest and all of a sudden you wake up it's like a treasure hunt you're like oh, yeah. what's this mushroom what's this moss like <laughs> you know it's just you open your eyes to the just the interconnectedness yeah. and can't can't see the forest for the trees and the moss yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, exactly. I can't see the forest for the medicine can I use that yeah. Yeah. I like that. Um, I'd love to know from both of you, what is your earliest memory of really connecting with nature? And not just I'm out walking through nature, but where you actually have an innate emotional impression of what's going on. So when I was growing up, I, I mean, I grew up coming up here a lot, which mm-hmm. was like, oh, it was just everything to me. But when I lived the the house that I grew up in my earliest years that I have memories of, we, my mom was someone who just, she let the violets in our backyard, like I remember everyone else's lawns were like freshly cut and you know like all green and like no weeds and I remember our backyard being different I remember her letting the you know she always kept it maintained but she let the ferns grow up under the shade she let oh beautiful you know she let the the violets like take root she let the like apples fall from the trees and the wasps and the bees like Mm. forage from them and we would go and sit in the ferns and pretend we were fairies and we had this beautiful lilac tree and I had such a connection with this lilac tree that we could kind of climb because it was sort of on a slant Mm. and then that backyard was like my fairy realm like sanctuary Mm -hmm. you know we'd sit out on the back deck and my mom would get us excited about a storm approaching or dance in the rain like I think that backyard and just Mm. just the amount of time we spent there and getting to know every detail and every bug and every leaf and what we could eat and what we couldn't was Mm -hmm. like that's my My little microphone yeah (laughs) I remember that being probably my biggest influence of, of forming that connection and Emily, what about you? Do you have one? Yeah, um, I think, uh, as I was saying, like, I feel like 
growing up here, I, I didn't fully realize, I didn't have perspective, right, of mm-hmm. just how magic it was. Um, and so what really did finally bring that home for me is when I, you know, at 18, left and moved to Toronto and started going to, to college down in Toronto and um, would come back to visit and, like, smell. The sense of smell is such a, a powerful yeah. sort of unconscious thing. And the minute I would step out of the car in the driveway and breathe in the air here, <laughs> just getting <Yeah>. <laughs> thinking about it, but just just how the freshness of the air that would would hit me, yeah. and that sense of like home and mm. calm, and you know being able to leave the like crazy bustle of the city behind, and just all of a sudden you know, feeling back in my body and yeah, it, it was so noticeable and so impactful that now it's like every time that it happens, every time I'm away for any amount of time, I'm like so excited for that initial like <laughs> step out of the car. When you, Ooh, I haven't had yes. that in a while. No, I want that. <laughs> so good. Step out of the car. <laughs> The human experience in all its beauty, what do we need to thrive to be, to be full humans? What do we need to thrive? <sighs> connection, community, um, connection in forms of community, um, people like we're social beings, we're social animals. Mm-hmm. Um, and in that sense of community, like love and caring and kindness. I think purpose, compassion, purpose Purpose is very important. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, yeah. And I think that looks different for everyone, of course, you know, everyone is unique in their, in what, maybe what their needs are, what they consider. What their values. Yeah. What their values are. Mm -hmm. Each person Um, is unique for sure. Yeah. But I think the reason, you know, when we talk about on a whole as a collective, like the collective suffering, it's that disconnect. It's the disconnect yeah. from each other and the disconnect from nature. And I yeah. think that, yeah, connection is everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agreed. Okay. And part of that is like also connection with nature in terms of like how we nurture ourselves as well and what we put in our bodies and how we yeah. feed ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. And that brings everything full circle for sure That's to what you guys are doing. Talk to me about your ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Which one? <laughs> Great question. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, just, I meant like, yeah, like the ecosystem that is, that is the actual, you know, like the, the forest, the forest or the land <laughs> system or yeah. the the ecosystem that is our, our community. Okay, now this is really great because um, I do have questions about community. That's coming up next. So why don't we stick with what you guys are doing and why it's so important to you? Sustainability. Um, yeah, talk to me about sustainability in your ecosystem. Okay. Yeah, on the farm. So our ecosystem here is we don't have we have some hardwood. We've got a lot of water. Like, <laughs> a lot of wet, you know, wet, like wetlands. it's a lot of okay. up here, yeah. like so, a lot of sw- yeah, kind of swampy side. But then we have this beautiful like open field part mm-hmm. as well. We have so, a mix of like managed forest. My parents back in the day um, had a forester come and assess the land, and they did a couple of um, plantations of red pine. Um, so we wow. have a healthy mix of like pine a lot of white pine um that's been affected by the yeah the blight um and yeah we have a maple sugar stand where yeah we just tap the trees on sunday every year we tap our maple sugar oh my gosh yeah we have highland we have lowland we have like a beautiful really beautiful mix of every of everything a little bit of everything Yeah. yeah 
you know, talking about the ecosystem and, you know, talking about water in general is like that, yeah, like how can we manage, you know, it, looking at indigenous cultures, it's like they, they, they aided in land management in mm-hmm. such a huge way. Mm-hmm. And, and it's kind of bringing some of that in, like, and listening to that intuition of like, what needs to stay wild, what needs a little bit of, you know, human interaction, redirection. redirection. And it's just like being very yeah. like gentle within that gentle, intuitive. And then it's like more guiding rather than being disruptive. Mm-hmm. To, mm-hmm. Interesting. To interesting. That's really interesting that you would bring up how, you know, the earth will tell you when to leave it and when to intervene. And it's like knowing that these systems in nature already exist so perfectly Mm -hmm. and that we can utilize that knowledge that we can gain from the environment to actually create maybe like smaller systems Mm -hmm. on a smaller piece of land or a smaller part Mm -hmm. so that it functions the same Mm -hmm. way and actually just brings value to the ecosystem and to the land. And also understanding um, like the history of the land as well, I found Mm -hmm. has been a really um, interesting piece um, because this, this land that we're on here was, you know, before, before it was, or after it was indigenous, when it was settled upon, it was turned into farmland and it was basically clear cut. So the oh. forest, the forest we have here is less than a hundred years old. Okay. Um, so that's been really interesting for me to discover in terms of like that forestry lens in like noticing how the trees grow and like, you know, when that pine light set in and that's why the trees are growing this way and you know what then can I do to like how can we how can we help this like population of species Mm -hmm. to thrive Mm -hmm. based on the history of like how they've been been influenced in the past you spoke about we can utilize that knowledge and bring value to the land and in that 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 knowledge is that part of the teaching is that part of the uh, learning rather than teaching that goes on at New Wing Meadows like do you talk about the land and um, educate in a way so that people feel connected to their own land yeah that's definitely something that we are planning on incorporating because I think you know like both of us have like our spiritual practice and I think that's a very important thing and I think that's a very like lovely avenue to like help people kind of create this like compassion towards the land Mm -hmm. as much as we're looking a lot at at it through a spiritual land there is a very like a spiritual lens sorry there's also a very like hands-on approach we are living our values and to be able to teach that and then see and kind of aid in people experiencing that themselves. And if that's something that they want, like Mm -hmm. that's what we're here to do is share that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do you guys have anything else to add around that? Because I know that was just a minute grain of sand in what you do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what I think it's just the knowledge that, you know, we as a species are so, you know, privileged to be able to utilize in terms of how we live and how we operate. And I think that's really important in like painting the whole picture in terms of um, interacting with the land. You know, it's not just about management, right? but it's, it's acknowledging, acknowledging the land as its own entity. Mm-hmm. Um, and really, like, um, investing in, like, the spirit of place is something that I've been exploring lately and recognizing the power of the spirit of place. And with place comes that idea of time and how the land has existed over time. And I think that's something that people, you know, that's part of the learning that I love. To, to share and instill in people is like whatever it is that they have a connection to, whatever their connection to spirit of place is, um, is so valuable. And um, 
And that can be found in like a city too, you know, like, of course, it, yeah. these are, yeah. these are things that people, whether or not they have, you know, a piece of land that they want to work or they live in an apartment in a city, like their, their values and they are learning that you can then, you know, we create, we create the world that we want to live in. You know, when our actions start reflecting our core values, that's when the change happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I have to bring this back to community, even though we've been speaking of various forms of building community and so on. Um, mm -hmm. How have you both built a community through Moonwing Meadows? chatting with other like farmers because we were starting the whole like homestead thing with the, or, all our chicken drama we had this summer and <laughs> yeah. it was talking with the farmers there um and just making friends and them being so lovely and be like come by whenever you know that's oh, sort of, good. so that like mutual that shared learning you know they're so happy to like teach you what what they know and so that you don't make the mistakes that they made and like oh, that's um, brilliant that's and when you guys way. when you guys were going to the farmers market were you going with with produce that you were actually growing or were you going to purchase and just visit oh no we, we were just going to first purchase yeah, yeah, yeah. to purchase and visit cool okay yeah good. yeah we like uh, to i think that's a huge way of how we build community too here is that we try to like shop, shop as food. local yeah. as possible and yeah. then you really form those connections with the people who are you are buying your products from mm -hmm. and yeah what have you had to give up to sustain this lifestyle yeah well for me um my life in toronto essentially that was like where i was centered for the past like on and off for the past 10 years um so friendships there um yeah. and you know obviously I still keep in touch with them and when possible they they come visit but um yeah and also my my music career in terms of like what I thought that trajectory was going to look like yeah. living in the city of course um so that's been you know shifted a little bit and I'm glad obviously you said it shifted not gone yeah, away, yeah. shifted yeah it's not gone away by any means because music is such a huge part of you know who I am and what I do and it's this amazing huge passion and part of my like major outlet for artistic expression and you know I've just found ways to it to will be incorporated that. here, be incorporated yeah. here. Yeah. and you know sure. Taylor and I have already like started a little like <laughs> joke band <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Our band is called Melba Coast. It's named after our grandmother. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh went, and our first gig was playing at her retirement home. <laughs> no way. Did you really? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I love it. That's brilliant. And how'd it go? Amazing. I was terrified yeah. because I've never performed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, was that was my first gig. Yeah. And what were you doing, Taylor? Oh, just, just singing, trying anyway. <laughs> Oh yeah, we did a little like folk sort of duo situation. Oh my gosh, I love it. And I love learned it. a bunch of all like old wartimey songs yeah. that my grandma yeah. knew and loved. Yeah. Oh, that's that's brilliant. brilliant. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I gladly threw my own life away. To go <laughs> okay, you <laughs> were in the towel. I was like, uh, being human has always been a little uncomfortable for me. So, <laughs> so coming to the woods has like been my everything. Um, sense of, I wouldn't say it's not like I don't, I have such a sense of freedom up here, but I think my whole life, I, I very much lived in that space of non-commitment mm -hmm. and not putting down roots and anywhere I would move I would obviously I'd find my little community and build my little community but I would never quite set the roots in mm -hmm. you know I yeah. would never I would kind of just like settle in like nest like I would burrow in but I wouldn't like really put the roots down and like make commit long and make long-term commitments and yeah everything like that it was always just kind of floating about and so I think what I really you know let go of was the just that that 
that flightiness. Like, I want to be here. Like, what do I want? <laughs> I want to be here, you know? Right. And it's like, and it's like, all right, like time to put the roots down then, mm-hmm. you know, make the plan, start the business. Like, you know, you know that regular human life is not going to work for you. So you, but you still need to do, you, you still need to do some human things. Human things. <laughs> Emily, how has this changed you? Oh man. Um, I mean, I think in, even though I was, um, established in Toronto, I still very much had that same flighty sense as, as Taylor, that non-committal sense to things. Okay. Um, because, you know, I say in and out of Toronto for the last 10 years, because I did like a year of traveling and then I lived in Manchester for two years and then I was back here for a year and then I was back, you know, I was kind of yeah. been all over the place too inside of that. And, yeah. um, yeah, what I was doing in Toronto, like nothing really ever made long-term sense. Like mm. I was always still just flying by the seat of my pants and saying like, oh, we'll see what happens. So this, in the same sense, is like provided me the opportunity to like commit to something that really matters. And all of a sudden it, it clicked. It like made sense. And I found myself making the long-term plans and not like balking at it and being like, Oh, I'm actually really excited by that. And the doing and the getting into action to like actually making it happen. Like those are things that like, yeah, you never come easily. And it is like, it came organically and it was just like, we bounced off each other and it was like, ding, 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 ding. And so I was like, wow, this is, this is magic. Yeah. This is magic. I've never felt before. What yeah. magic beans did you take to find yeah. out your true calling? Because <laughs> this, is part of the, this is part of the human condition is we're always searching for that. Yeah. Like, what is the right road to be on? And you guys have found it. Is that the case? Did you find it? Or does this just feel so right that nothing else will get in the way? I Like, I'm always struggling with that, you know, with the, like, what is, like, does everybody come here with a specific purpose, you know, and Mm -hmm. there's so much in the spiritual community of, like, find what you came here to do, and then do it, and it's Mm -hmm. like, you know how much pressure that is, like, (laughs) what are you talking about, like, what, like, all of us feel that pressure, it's like, why are you saying that, you know, and do you know how many stones I have to turn over to find the one, yeah, exactly, so I think, like, for us, it was, I mean, for me, it was like, it was, I had to strip everything away first. And I think COVID Mm -hmm. really helped with that, Mm -hmm. like in a big way, just like strip everything back, like no distractions, no, you know, like for me, part of it for me was like not being in a partnership, you know, um, like a romantic partnership, like stripping it back. Like, what do we actually want? Where do we want? Like, how does life look? want to look to us Mm -hmm. you know and then basically the business just formed out of that and I think that's you know like that's where that purpose should come from like where do you feel most fulfilled and then how can you utilize what you have already in your life what you've already kind of made your life and kind of move towards that trajectory Mm -hmm. talk to me about sort of your biggest spring project is it the yoga pavilion Yes, I would say so. That yeah. yeah, because we have bunkies that were like prefab too that we've ordered and have coming, but those oh. are going to take only a couple of days to set up because they're because they're pretty simple to come together. Oh my God, guys, this is amazing. Yeah, but, yeah. So the yeah the pavilion is like the major design and yeah. build project. That's the one we got to go to the bank for, you know. Yep, <laughs> got to get oh. that one. Can you imagine oh trying God. to build this retreat on the side of the 401 or no. Highway 11 or? <laughs> you know? So it's like it's the land and it's you know the the beautiful nature of Emily's parents, my aunt and uncle, that yeah. are you know they also share a similar vision to us mm-hmm. and they're so supportive and they're the ones that own it and are letting us do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, that's like that's our community yeah. too, right? It's yeah. like did have her so much gratitude to them. Yeah, but can but I, knowing 
knowing it's a what is like not it's like an interdependent because it's like we're creating a space where everybody can can be and live and flourish and have purpose yeah an interdependent for sure yeah, yeah, yeah. oh it's so beautiful thank you both for your time your energy your honest and candid you know um, responses um, I'm super, super excited to put this into print um, and to make it come alive. And I'm really, really thrilled for both of you with what you're doing and wish you the most um, luck and success. Thank you, Kelly. Thank I hope we so get much. to meet in person sometime. We will. We have to. Yeah. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed our first feature story podcast, and I hope you will pick up a copy of Stoke Zine at independently owned locations around Huntsville and the greater Muskoka area. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram, um, as well as at movemediaproductions.com forward slash blog forward slash zine.